Holy crap, I got a Beast Wars figure for my birthday! Oh, Aspenites are happy. You know, maybe I should start a collection of the Beast Wars figures because I just love these characters so much and I can easily afford the Where did they all come from? I gotta do something about this. I need an excuse as to why I'm blowing my money on all of these robots. Hmm. I know! I'll review them and a lot of the other random junk that clutters my house. It'll be great! No one has ever thought of that. Ah! Go away! Shoot! Shoot! Over the course of the past few months, I've collected a figure of almost every main character in Beast Wars. Not including alternate forms or Dinobot 2, because that's just a repaint, or Tigerhawk, because that plot was stupid. We are literally two nerds! Some of them are from the original lines, but most of them come from the Legacy and War for Cybertron lines. And for the most part, they look phenomenal. They went out and did their very best to accurately portray the characters from the cartoon, while still being immensely poseable and fun to mess with. But unfortunately, there's always that one straggler. Like, if your parents got the cereal variety pack and it has plenty of wonderful cereal, but then there's like, original Cheerios just lurking in there, and of course your siblings took the good stuff, leaving you just with original Cheerios, and who the hell likes the original Cheerios? They taste like dirt. Mom! She took all the Lucky Charms! Mom! Mom! What I'm saying is that War for Cybertron Rhinox is the original Cheerios for the line. Now, on first glance, WFC Rhinox does not seem all that bad. In fact, it seems pretty good. If you saw the original Amazon listing, you probably thought, HOT DANG IT'S THE BOY! But once you hold it in your hands and stare right into his tiny translucent eyes, you see the problems arise. Let's start off with the question my grandmother asked my sister's boyfriend. Why are you that color? Seriously, why of all the colors did they choose this baby barf green plastic? Just a quick comparison, here's the Amazon listing with a metallic green plastic, which would make sense for how he looks in the show, but instead we get this. I'm fairly certain there are laws against false advertising. But okay, so the color of plastic ain't right. At least it's accurate to the show, right? Well sure, aside from his lack of spikes, the rhino head's mouth being closed, he's missing the maximal insignias on his head, and he has this weird flat tray table chest that he can use to hold up a miniature CRT TV for the other Transformers Melvin, to watch. Melvin, brother of the joke. But those I, I could Melvin, tolerate at least. The what the heck happened to his guns? They're so tiny! Those aren't chain guns, those are hair dryers he can use at a salon. I'm telling you girlfriend, you need to dump his ass and get yourself a real man. At least it can be stored on his back for weapon storage. That's always nice. Well, dang, girl! What you got going on back there? Look at the sheer amount of kibble going on. And the thing is, sometimes kibble isn't much of a problem. Some things people would call kibble feels more so like they're trying to spice up a figure's design to give them an armor look, some kind of weaponry. Here, though, I think the only reason it's there is to add some much-needed girth to Rhinox, because otherwise he's bizarrely thin for such a bulky character. But hey, at least his arms are meaty. Let's do an action pose. Where did your biceps go, Rhinox? Seriously, there's nothing there? His arms are on a hinge on his shoulder joints. Despite technically being fully articulated, you can't put his arms too far out, otherwise it looks absolutely weird. Not that he could because of all this stupid plating getting in the way. Oh, and speaking of his legs, that's the worst part of his transformation. The rest of it is pretty simple, but they absolutely needlessly complicated his legs. You have to basically take out the legs inside of his legs, which wouldn't be so bad, but the plating gets caught on each other constantly, causing bits to get stuck, other bits to ping off, and it feels like it's gonna break. And you have to shove his gun up his ass in order to store it, which itself barely fits in. <laughs> Lovely. At least the rhino looks fine. It's basically a brick. It feels like one of those rhino figures you get at a museum gift shop, but it's, it's a rhino. Yay. Overall, I'd give this figure two Rhino Farts out of five. Overall, a disappointing entry into the WFC figure line, and a real shame. The plastic is reasonable quality, and on first glance, it looks the part, but the more you look at it, the worse it gets. A bit like your mum. But hey, it's a Rhinox figure, and it does complete the collection at least. Oh wait, there's Thrilling 30 Rhinox. 
That, that, that just, that, that just fell. <laughs> that, that was not a touch. Which basically fixes every problem with that figure. It's even the same size, so it fits in perfectly with the WFC figures. And with his Gatling gun set spin, Ronox can still continue his career as a hairstylist. Hasbro probably could have saved money and sold more figures if they were lazy and reused that figure than do this one. Only one thing to do now. Hey Lunar, I got a present for you. What?